Hi, Algebra 2. This is Unit 8, Lesson 5, and today we're going to do some more exponent practice. So exponents are something that you learn back in algebra. They're something that we've done earlier in the year, but these laws are really, really important that you know them in order to be able to go on to um, higher levels of math. They'll be used all the time. So just a quick review of them. Remember when I'm multiplying, I'm going to add the exponents, okay? So I add those exponents together. When I'm dividing, I subtract my exponents. When I have a power to a power, I multiply those exponents. All right, if I have a fractional exponent, that um, denominator is the root and the numerator is the exponent. When I have a negative exponent, the way to make it positive is to put it underneath the fraction. So I put it in the denominator, it's one over x to the positive a. Or if it's already in the denominator, I move it up to the numerator. And then if I have um, a whole expression in exponents, everything is to that power. So if I have an expression parentheses, everything is to the a power. And the last one is anything to the zero power equals one. Okay, so those are things that you should already be familiar with and know. So let's look at exercise one. I just want to simplify each of these. So you can see on top I have multiplication, so I add the exponents. On the bottom I have a power to a power, so I multiply those exponents. And now I have division, so I subtract those exponents. And 7 minus 10 is negative 3. But of course I wouldn't leave it like that. I would leave it as 1 over x to the positive 3. Okay? For b... Um, everything is to the fourth power, so the x squared is to the fourth power, that's x to the eighth, and the y is to the fourth power, and now I just have division, so I'm going to take those exponents, I'm going to subtract them, so um, technically I have x to the third and y to the negative three, but of course that y to the negative three, I'm going to write as y to the positive three, all right, on um, C, I'm going to take those negative exponents, that x to the negative 6, and I'm going to move it up top, and it's going to be x to the positive 6. I'm going to take the x to the negative 2 and move it down to the bottom. And now that they're positive, I'm going to subtract those exponents, so I have x to the 4th, y to the 3rd. Okay, of course you could have just subtract them, and um, negative 2 minus negative 6 is x to the 4th and then you could have uh, subtracted the y's as well. That would work. All right, so everything is to the second power, so that's x to the negative 6, y to the negative 8, and that is x to the negative 4th on the bottom, and y to the negative 12th. Okay, so this one let's do different. Instead of moving them to make it positive, let's just subtract them. So negative 6 minus negative 4 is negative 2, and negative 8 minus negative 12 is positive 4, all right? But this one was a negative 2. That negative sort of got hidden right there. So my final answer are the y's will stay on top, but the x's I will move to the bottom, okay? So exponents are something that you should be comfortable doing. All right, what happens if my um, powers are not integers, though, okay? If my powers are fractions, well, in order to add them, if we're looking at 2a, I can only add if I have the same denominator. So I'm going to get a common denominator of 6. So 1 third is really 2 6, and 1 half is really 3 6. All right, so now that they have the same denominator, now I can add them. So on the top, I'm going to get x to the 5 6. The bottom was just x to the 1 6. So that equals x to the 4, 6, because now I can subtract them because I'm down to division. And that can be x to the 2 thirds. I just reduce that. Okay. On um, b, I have x to the 1 fifth to the fifth power. So that's really x to the 5 halves. I'm just multiplying. And again, I'm going to multiply. So that's x to the 9 halves. And then, of course, I'll subtract, so 5 halves minus 9 halves is negative 4 halves. And the way to make that negative positive is to put it in the denominator. But again, 4 halves is just 2, so I have 1 over x squared. So fractions definitely get a little bit more complicated than I'm doing. 
All right, so don't forget on C, everything is to the third power. So the four is to the third power. Four times four times four is 64. And now the two thirds is to the third power. So I'm multiplying them, that's six thirds. And then the bottom I have 32 X to the eighth. Now we should know that six thirds is just two. So I'm gonna divide the numbers and that's two. And then I will, well, and let me write it out in case anybody was having trouble with it. And on the bottom, I have x to the eighth still. All right, so that's two. I subtract those exponents, x to the negative six. The two stays on top. The only thing that's negative is that x, so that is what comes to the denominator. Okay, so we're going to practice these some more tomorrow, but follow along as I'm doing these to make sure that you're comfortable doing them. All right, and we also want to practice our fractional exponents. We want to make sure that we can write them as radicals. So remember that denominator is the root, so it's going to be the cubed root of x to the fifth. All right, and now I can simplify radicals, but I can only simplify an even number. So x squared equals x. x to the fourth equals x squared x to the sixth, the square root of x to the sixth, equals x to the third. So I have to break this down. Now that's if I'm doing x squared. So here I'm doing um, x to the third. So the only thing I can do is I break this down to the cubed root of x cubed, because that will equal x, and what's left is the cubed root of x squared. All right, so like I did x squareds up there, but say I had the cubed root, the cubed root of x to the cubed is x. The cubed root of x to the sixth is x squared. All right, so I have to be careful with the cube roots. Um, on b, oh, I didn't finish this, sorry. And I, this is left over, so that stays just like that. On B, I can't do anything if my exponents don't have the same, my fractions don't have the same denominator. So I'm going to find the same denominator, 2 and 3. I can use a denominator of 6. So that's going to be X over 15 over 6. I just multiplied numerator and denominator by 6. And on the bottom, again, I want a denominator of 6. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator, denominator by 2. Once I have the same denominator, now I can subtract them. So that's x over 7 6. And now I can write that as a um, root. So it's the sixth root of x to the seventh. And again, that can break down to the sixth root of x to the sixth and the sixth root of x to the one. And the sixth root of x to the sixth is x. So that gets simplified. And I still have the sixth root of x. So definitely a little bit more complicated. On C, let's make that a positive exponent by moving it to the numerator. And then it's just gonna be the square root of x cubed. So square roots are easier, I think. So I'm just gonna break that down to the biggest even number that I can, and then the one that's left over. Now the square root of x squared is x. That one gets simplified. The other one stays radical x. All right, um, and let's look at the multiple choice because we will certainly practice more of these tomorrow, so I'm not going to do D, E, and F with you in the video. So the multiple choice, I just want to know which one is equivalent. So cubed root of 8x to the 7th. Well, let's take the number because 8 is actually a perfect cube, all right, and then let's split up the x to the 7th. Again, I want to split it up to the highest multiple of 3 I can, and then the one that's left over. Because the multiple of 3, 1 gets simplified. The cubed root of 8 is just 2. The cubed root of x to the 6 is x squared. And then the cubed root of x, that one does not get simplified. So these two get simplified. I made them into something that could simplify. So those came out of the radical, and the other one stayed in. All right, so let's see if there's something that is equivalent there. Yikes, there's nothing that looks like that, that it's equivalent. Um, notice that none of these have, look at my answers, none of them have um, cube roots in them. So let's change this back to a fraction. 
All right, so I'm looking at this cubed root of x, and I'm going to change it back to x to the one-third. And now if I'm multiplying, I can um, add the exponents, but I can't add them like this. I have to make sure that I have a common denominator. Oh, oops, I left out my x. So the x squared, I made it x to the six-thirds because the other one had a denominator of three. And now I can add them together now that I have the same denominator, 2x to the seven-thirds. Okay, and um, there we go, 2x to the seven-thirds. So I had to play with that one around a little bit more. All right, next, next one, last one. Square root of four is two. Okay, so that can come out of the um, fraction and or out of the square root. And then I still have, so this is square root of four, square root of x. The square root of four can come out, so that's two. And then the square root of x, again, if you look at your answer choices, none of them have a square root. So let's write that back as a fraction. That would be x to the one half. All right. And I don't exactly see that. Four looks close, but it's not. Um, it's actually going to be choice one. All right. So they left the two. They sort of separated this. The one half came out. And then x to the 1 half, I brought up top, and it was negative 1 half. Okay? So we will practice all those tomorrow. There's certainly things um, that are a little bit tricky, but if you think about all those exponent laws and just take it slowly, you should be fine.